For those of you who know the channel, you guys know that I, uh, if you're really old school, you know that I was a competitive player before in Overwatch. And you probably more know me as a competitive coach. I coached in Contenders, um, and I worked a lot with Tier 3 scene and Tier 3 orgs, done a lot of one-on-one -on -one session, private coaching, that kind of stuff. Um, of course, if you want to hire me as a private coach, 50 years for a two-hour session, hit me up on our Discord server down below. It doesn't matter if you're Bronze or Top 500. Um, uh, we can set something up. All that stuff. Um, but why did I quit? I, had, I quit as a player. Um, and even more so, I quit as a coach when I hit the goals that I wanted. And like when there was actually a chance of me going professional with it, um, that's when I decided that I wanted out. Uh, and there's a lot of videos about Stewie 2K and Sinatra and all these amazing pro players and how, you know, their success stories. But I want to talk a little bit about a story of a failure, a story about somebody that didn't make it and that dropped out um, and didn't want to make it anymore. So hello, my beautiful and lovely gamers, as always, my name is Jonal. Like on the video helps greatly against the algorithm, uh, helps promote the video. Um, share this around, spread it out. I think it's it's nice and important to kind of get this topic out and talk about not just uh, the success stories and like the, the people that made it like crazy, but also talk a little bit about how it is um, when you're rising and, and why I decided I did not want to be a competitive player anymore. Um, at the same time, uh, of course, a comment down below with your thoughts, opinions, experiences, uh, greatly appreciated. I read them all. Uh, so thank you guys so much. And of course, if you want to, subscribe to the channel. It helps it grow. It's greatly appreciated. Click that bell notification if you want to make sure you stay updated on every single video. Thank you guys for the amazing growth uh, that we have done in 2020. And let's just keep that going. Um, my Twitter, Twitch, and Discord if you want to join an awesome community. Link down in the description with other fellow, uh, yeah, like-minded, just amazing people. Let's talk about me as a player. Me as a player was... Pretty fucking trash. Let, let's be completely fucking honest. Um, comparatively to, you know, the level that I worked with as a coach. Uh, I I started my team in Season 2. I played Overwatch in the beta. I started in Season 2 as I, you know, made a team. Because I wanted structure. I, I didn't want 6 DPSs or, you know, whatever. <laughs> team comes, you got a rank back then. I wanted 2 tanks, 2 supports, 2 DPSs. I want to be able to play stably like that. So me and a friend got together and we built a team. And if you ever thought about, or if you have ever built a team, you probably know this. Uh, if you had it for a longer period of time, people drop out or people not good enough, so you replace them. And it's always like the cycle of people in and out of the teams. Um, and I got to a point, you know, where uh, I, I played an OD and we didn't make it very far, but I did play in the first division in my country. And that was fucking awesome. And I got to play on TV, which was just amazing. And I really, really, really uh, enjoyed that moment. Um, but outside of that, um, I found very little success and there was a lot of drama there is a lot of drama if you are a player uh, a lot of people will call you trash and trash talk on discords and so on which you know again you prob doesn't really bother me and for a lot of people it doesn't really bother them um, but it, you know it, it adds up to kind of like when you're thinking about it okay this is something that you want to invest more time and energy in it, it does actually add up over time if this is if this is worth it anymore um, uh, one in one instance, a team that my that my that we had beaten in a tournament here locally in Norway um, uh, recognized me in a rank game. He was on the Smurf, and he essentially asked me if I was uh, Jonal from uh, I think Air, which was the team I was playing for. And I said yes, and he asked me in Norwegian. And I answered in Norwegian, and he said who he was, and it was a guy again from a team that we had previously beat. And he essentially started uh, flaming me and trash talking me and um, purposely threw my rank game. Right, that kind of stuff. Which is just like bad taste in the mouth. Uh, and I also, as a player, especially noticed uh, in the Norwegian community, right? Like, you know, if it internationally, right, that happens. But especially like when it's in your country, there was a lot of uh, administrative abuse. People that had admin rights on either Discord server or people that had admin rights on the Facebook, the major Facebook group for Norwegian Overwatch, uh, really started abusing their powers a lot. Um, like like during the community event, like when you were trying to find a community manager, there was a bunch of people submitting, you know, the World Cup community management posts. And administrators on, for example, the Facebook group would delete other people's and promote theirs or their friends. 
stuff like that. So it wasn't really a community event or like it wasn't even a fair fight because one had like the like a, they had the biggest site for the Overwatch community uh, on Facebook and the others had nothing. That kind of stuff and doing like weird shit like ma making a retirement post. If an admin was very corrupt, they would make a retirement post for that admin and say, "Oh, I, I'm going to quit because you know a lot of you guys have said that you know the way I use my powers is not okay. I accept that, so I'm going to quit." And everybody that says good, thank you, uh, stuff like that. And what's happened to see a guy that was clearly misusing his admin powers uh, was being banned from the group. And then he was like, this was just like to find out who who who, who was against the admin staff. And like that kind of stuff um, happened. And, it, you know, and other stuff. Like there, there was just like a lot of just administrative uh, abuse and all that kind of stuff. Again... I was never affected by it. I was never banned or muted or anything like that. Um, but it adds up, kind of seeing that, okay, as a player, there's a, there's going to be some toxicity and some negativity. And then as a player, there's also going to be a very uh, different environment depending on who you have as friends or, or who is the admins of different groups or stuff like that. And it kind of just became this whole, like, thing that I didn't want to spend time on. Uh, when there then happened some internal st struggles, because again, I noticed that there was no way I was making it as a professional player. The only reason I was still scrimming um, at a time was because it was fun. Uh, we were going to play in first division in my country, and that was fun, even though we never know we knew we weren't going to win. There was some teams like BX3 who was going to stomp our asses. Um, we knew that coming into the tournament. Um, and it was fun, but I was playing because I was playing with my friends. I was playing with my team, which I liked. Uh, some of them, Hakke, for example, which you know if you've been here on the channel, is an amazing uh, support player uh, and one of my good friends still to this day. Uh, another one, which was um, uh, his, I'm not going to say his name, he was essentially my main DPS player. He was also a Finnish player. Really good guy. Uh, like a couple of weeks prior to this story, he he had essentially said, you know, the only reason I'm still on the team is because of you, you know. And we had this talk, like, you know, one of the reasons that I still played competitively was because of him because you know doing scrims him and Huck and the rest of the guys it was just an awesome team to be in with friends that was having fun and was playing and, and was trying to improve and just get better and just saw want to see where we could go and because of one player drama broke out and essentially it ended up with my main DFS player for example who again I really thought was a good friend of mine and we had like again two weeks one week ago had this talk where we you know like, you know, heart to heart, you know, how much we appreciate each other and, um, and you know, how, how grateful we are, you know, for being friends and, and how much that kind of meant for us, which, which was really an amazing, you know, time. And you probably had online friends like that. We came into this meeting with this one guy and essentially all of a sudden my main DPS, like over a week had clearly decided that like, I was trash and I was the reason the team was failing and all kinds of stuff. And that kind of just like, it kind of it kind of gives like a bad taste in your mouth, and and it ended up with the entire team disbanding, and I had that option to build a new team or or join another team or whatever, and I decided that there's no way I'm making it pro. I'm not playing with my friends anymore, and because of that, why bother? So I transitioned to coaching, which where most of you probably know me from as a coach. I transitioned into coaching, which I started enjoying a lot. Coaching teams, uh, doing private coaching, especially back then, I did a lot of it for free, um, and just like grabbing experiences and just like becoming better at explaining and also learning about the game but also explaining the game and breaking it down for people and that was really really fun and i just wanted to hit you know there's still some drama when you are a coach but it's far less um as you are not a player so you're not getting directly hated on you're kind of like more sitting in the background you're not kind of like front and center um and on top but there's still like some manager stuff right there's some, some really there's some amazing people out there uh, perspective, which uh, I work with on IU, for example, is like the best manager I've ever worked with in Overwatch, ever, and just an amazing person. Um, uh, but for example, there was just other things, right? Like there were some managers that was clearly lying or that was threatening both, both players, and there were some people that said that they were going to get sponsored or had a lot of money. It was clear that they were stringing on graphic artists and players and staff and VOD reviewers and like, VOD recorders, actually. Uh, people just flying around recording their games because they were promising all kinds of shit. There's all this kind of shady business stuff, especially when you're a coach that you've got to see, um, which I didn't really appreciate. 
um, and kind of gave me like this feeling that there was a lot of the teams that I that I worked with that was rotten when it came not their players and potentially not, not even maybe their managers but a lot of other people in their org were kind of rotten and there was a lot of corruption and kind of like all this kind of like backroom deals being made and so on and so on and, and it wasn't really to my liking um, but I kept working I kept grinding and I managed to to start coaching some contenders teams and working with the high through T teams and, and having a blast doing that and and that's kind of when I quit so why like I wanted to hit con I, I wanted to hit contenders I started working with contenders and why did I quit then and even more so as I was starting to work with contenders the more and more I was working with high low teams the less time I put into it I started Instead of being a, a team coach for a lot of teams, I was a consultant. I, I, I coached like six different teams at the same time, but I coached them in smaller intervals, in smaller doses. Instead of sitting four to six hours and watching the entire scrim, I would watch a replay of the scrim and do uh, one map that they wanted me to do. I'll do a one review of it, and I could spend like an hour doing that, and then I was done. Uh, and I did that for multiple teams and kind of jumping around consulting and doing that instead of concentrating on one team. And the answer was really that I got burned out. Uh, and you do. Um, it was not fun doing VOD reviews anymore. The challenge had kind of gone away. I kind of could just watch it and just take my notes. And I kind of knew what was going on. It was still super fun doing one-on-one -on -one stuff. And it still is today. That's still why That's why I still private coach. Um, I get paid for it, which is great. But it, I also have a job. I have a full-time job. So the payment while it's great and keep you know financial support and and keeping the financial support of the channel as i invest a lot of that money back in here um it it's it's mainly something that i do because i still i really like working with individual players but working with huge teams wasn't that fun anymore even though again i still do it from time to time i still do some consulting work but it's just like you could you can see a really good example was i was watching a a, a random or watch league match between two teams uh, and I didn't. I don't remember what teams, but it was essentially some of the teams that I didn't really care about. It was kind of like you know, like uh, Shanghai Dragon, Boston Uprising, or something like that, right? Like I don't remember the match exactly, but like it wasn't like Dallas Fuel or Soul Dynasty or NYXL, like some of the teams that I really liked. It was some other teams, um, and I and you know I just tried to enjoy a a a, a Overwatch League match, and I couldn't. I was looking at it as if it was a contender scrim. And I couldn't stop, like, not in, like, and, and that did that I didn't enjoy watching the Overwatch League match. And I kind of, like, put it into perspective for me, where I couldn't even enjoy, you know, I, 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 I realized I don't enjoy coaching teams anymore. Like, it's not that fun. Um, and I needed a huge break. And, I, and I've taken that, and I, again, I do very small consulting, but investing six hours into a VOD review... Or like a scrim where I just inspect it in bird's view and I take my note to have a half an hour summary with some players. Even though that's greatly appreciated for the players, I don't get a lot of that anymore. Um, compared to doing one-on-one -on -one sessions or something similar like that. Um, and especially for me, it came kind of like I was finishing my bachelor's degree. And IT became... IT had been a secondary focus. I had been a com like I did school, and then I rushed home to play competitively, and I didn't put as much focus on school as I could, um, because I was enjoying you know playing competitively or coaching a lot or something like that, um, and then also doing YouTube on top of this. But then I kind of decided that I really, really, really like tech. I really like programming uh, and developing, and I got more and more and more interested. I was already interested, of course, while I was studying, and I was enjoying it. But not to the degree I am now, or not to the degree I, I became. Uh, I started enjoying being with my friends, playing D&D, &D, uh, hanging out, in s or playing with them, playing Overwatch or Valorant now, to, of course, or, or League back then when you know I was learning League, uh, or something like that. I was enjoying that, f or making YouTube content, or streaming, or doing private sessions, far more than coaching a, a, a team and sitting in a scrim, even if it was incredible you know players or, or or known players or you know people that i you know really admired working with those people amazing we're working with some amazing managers but and and even better some amazing coaches but i rather wanted to be with my friends or make content or do a private session with somebody or or something else or programming and developing something 
um i i way i way more it, it, it wasn't even it wasn't because it had become a chore it had become a chore being a team coach and and spending that much time wasn't viable anymore especially uh, when i got a girlfriend uh, so for those of you who saw so a lot of you probably know this i have a girlfriend we've been together for two years now i we live together now uh and, and i'd rather want to spend time with her uh or um uh or anything else really than I want to sit in a six-hour scrim block. And I'm not saying that sitting in a six-hour scrim block is, is bad. I have done it way too much. I've started in, I've been in so many scrims, either as a player or as a coach. And it can be really fun, especially when you're a coach. It can be really fun watching something, taking notes, listening to the comms, finding out how to improve this, make a long-term plan. All that can be super fucking fun when you avoid the drama and the internal stuff, right? If you ignore that, it is it is a blast. Um, but you get to a point where, it, I, or I got at least to a point where I didn't feel it was challenging anymore. Um, and I didn't find it enjoyable to sit and watch it. Because it was like, I, it was essentially like watching the same episode of a TV series. I had seen it so many times before. I, even even if there was, there was a meta change, then it was enjoyable for a little bit as people were finding out the meta. And I had to like come up with strategies and like coach, coach something new. And, and then, you know, for example, when, when everybody was playing GOATS, as an example... It was just goats, goats, goats. And everybody was playing goats. And and that's not very... Like, it was just watching the same thing over and over and over and over again. That was the only... And, and then there was a couple of breaks where some people would pull out some different strats. And then it was back to the same thing over and over again. And, and even then, you know, sometimes there was a meta change. But the meta change was so close to something else that had already been meta like a dive or something similar, that I knew how to coach it. it. It wasn't a challenge anymore. I knew the theory, I knew the strats, I knew how to play it. So I just needed to educate uh, the players. And then it wasn't a challenge for me anymore. And, and then I didn't really see any reason to. And again, you have to ask yourself, you know, why are we doing the Why are we coaching? Why are we playing? With one, fun, right? So when my team disbanded as a player, I didn't want to do it anymore. Because I lost, I didn't, I couldn't play with my friends anymore, and a lot of them, for some reason, uh, I, again, I blame still this one guy who came in, but especially two of my friends, uh, the off tank and the main DPS, two people that I really, really liked, as good friends. Like it's fine if if the team disbanded, but like we weren't friends anymore because of of for some reason they they were very mad, uh, or he had said something, or I don't know what happened behind my back. Um. Uh, so so then it wasn't enjoyable anymore. I didn't get to play with my friends. And then when I started working with coaching, I didn't want to invest the time into it. So I was working with a bunch of small teams, and that was fun for a while. But then it there wasn't any challenge anymore. So while there was a challenge for me as a player, and and I knew I wouldn't make it, so I did it for my, with my friends. Now it was less that you know maybe I can make it, sure, but I don't want to. Like it can't, like I asked myself that multiple times like what happens if you get an offer for for the overwatch league not saying that i would i asked myself hypothetically if that came through the you quote unquote your dream the dallas field calls today and says hey do you want to be our head coach or or assistant coach hey do you want to come and work for us we'll fly to la we'll pay you a salary and i looked at that and i said i don't want to i want to be here and i want to finish my bachelor i want to go and work in it as a, as a system developer and I want to be with my girlfriend and my friends. I want to play games. I want to make YouTube content. I don't want to to leave Norway. I, I want to. I don't want to sit for, you know, spend eight eight to twelve hours a day working working on the game as a coach. Uh, I I want to play the game and I want to have fun with it and I want to make content about video games and and be with the YouTube community that I build and stuff like that. And I wanted to play D and D. That's what I wanted. And, and at that point, it was like, okay, so why do I do it? And I still, and again, I kept consulting a bunch of teams, mostly because I knew the people, and it was fun kind of helping out people, and I still love helping out people. If a team asks me today, hey, do you want to come and, and like do a water review for us? I say yes, most of the time, as long as it's the time that fits me, because I still love it. I still love helping people out. I, I, I still have so much fun doing that. It's just, it just came to this point um, where there was just other priorities that for me was worth it far more. And again, like, you know, and yeah, I think that's that's really the best explanation of it. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. And again, there's nothing wrong if you don't, if you, if you, the only thing you want to do is you want to make it to OWL uh, or whatever eSport you're in, you want, you, that's what you want. You want to make it professionally and you want to grind for that, then that's amazing. 
and I wish you the best of luck. Um, and I hope that you make it. And and there is the chance of you making it is very low because that's just how esport is. But I hope you do. I seriously hope you do. Um, for me, it, I just found out that content creation is much more fun, and one-on-one -on -one sessions are so much more fun as it is more personal than just working with with this bird's eye view. Um, and the hours are also far more doable as it is one hour prep and then it's a one hour session and then I'm done. It's not a four to six hour scrim block plus whatever is after plus whatever prep is before that. Plus you need to do one on one sessions with individual players in between the scrim blocks. Right. And you can see how much time all of a sudden gets consumed if you are the coach uh, of that team. Uh, and, and that's that's why I quit. That's why I stopped being a competitive player. Um, to once again emphasize this, and I know I said it way too many times because a lot of because like a video like this, a lot of people just read the title and ignore what I say um, because there's a lot of videos like that on YouTube where I say something and then people like hear it and then they read the title and then they ignore what I said. Um, I still coach. I still do one-on-one -on -one sessions. I still do private coaching. I still do VOD reviews here on YouTube, uh, and I still do. Very sometimes consulting for teams um, because it's so fun and because I, I like helping out people and I like being around that community with just some really really cool people um, but that's really it for this video if 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 you like this type of video like it comment subscribe again your thoughts opinions personal experience with this I, I love to read that kind of stuff and, and I, I hope you have a lovely lovely holidays um, please do take care of yourself remember to wash your hands wear a mask we're soon over with this um yeah take care of yourself tell somebody that you love them and as always my name has been journal and you guys keep the enemy in your crosshair